Jumbo! Welcome to Big Red Journeys. I am your host, Big Red, and on today's very special journey, we're here at the San Diego Zoo for the grand opening of the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp, the brand new children's zoo here at the world famous San Diego Zoo. It has been re envisioned, reimagined. Today, we're going to see the grand opening ceremony, the ribbon cutting, if you will. Go inside, check out the new exhibits, see the cool animals that they have here, and just explore what this new base camp has to offer. So, if you care to follow along with me on this journey, let's go. Three, two, one. Ellie, can you release the birds? There you go. Now look at the sky. Now that our macaws are free in the zoo, you are free to explore the zoo as well. So for the opening ceremony today, the actual base camp opens at 11, but there is going to be a ribbon cutting at 10 o'clock that the public is allowed to be a part of. And it'll be right over there towards the front. Good morning and welcome to the San Diego Zoo. I'm Paul Baerbalt, President and CEO of San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. We're honored to see all of you here today, including members of our Board of Trustees, our executive team, and so many of the team members who brought what's behind me to life. We're launching today the largest endeavor in San Diego Zoo history. It's my pleasure today to welcome you to the new Denny Sanford Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. The old children's zoo is gone, but out with the old and in with the new. Lots of memories at that zoo for me, but I am very excited to see what this new base camp has to offer. Germ balls, as I like to call them, does connect into the Busy Bee Cafe, which is my favorite of all the restaurants here at the zoo, so that's good to know. And you have an open picnic area out here, a bunch of tables and canopies which kind of connect into the Busy Bee Cafe area over there. Restrooms are behind those blue perforated walls right over there. And then the Komodo, Dragon, and Hummingbird exhibits are still technically part of the new base camp, but they're kind of situated a little bit outside over there. That's the Komodo Dragon over there and the Hummingbird exhibit. And if you want to see those, you can check out an earlier video that I did when those first open. I'll put it right here. More of an open... Uh, concept there's actually two different levels there's no real pathway per se yes there are some ways to go around but for the most part you can go down this hill right here with the little spongy kind of foam rubbery you can walk the traditional pavement and it's actually two levels looks like they have a little store here base camp provisions they have some of the branded merchandise look at this Cute little Fennec Fox shirt. Oh, this is a nice little water bottle. Look at that. I got some burrowing owls, some butterflies, Ooh, some sort of tortoise, and rodent right there. I'm going to assume these are probably uh, animals that you could probably see here inside base camp. Got some interesting patches here. These represent the different areas of the base camp. It's separated into four different biomes. We got the desert dunes, the tropical rainforest. The marsh meadows and the wild woods. And for the adults, you can pick up your own Wildlife Explorers Base Camp branded shirt or this cool crew neck sweater. I actually might pick this one up. It's very soft, very nice. Get to interact with the Lorax, the greatest of all the Seuss characters. Okay, first stop, why don't we check out Spineless Marvels? Wow, this is really pretty. Look at the projections on the ceiling. It shrinks you down to the size of a bug. I really feel small. But look how beautiful it is. Look at that. Got dragonflies up in the air. Butterflies. 
pretty flowers. Oh, look, there's some butterflies right there, some monarchs. Look at that. And even along the wall, you have plants that are as tall as a human. Look at that. Really make you feel small. Looks like we got some terrariums here with different insects. Let's go check it out. Here we have a Peruvian jumping stick. Right there, right in front. Look at that. And a dragon-headed Katie did. Back there in the upper left corner, if you can tell. Those guys are big. They're about the size of a small hand, I would say, to fit in the palm of your hand. I just got an amazing piece of information from one of the uh, employees here. Uh, shout out to Andrew. But he was telling me the projections that's on the on the ceiling right here, earlier it was dragonflies when we first walked in. Now it's a bunch of butterflies. Well, no two scenes are ever going to be the same. And the reason why is because the computer uses artificial intelligence to change the butterflies, the insects, whatever is flying up there. So each one of these is different. So that is so unique and interesting that literally artificial intelligence, this projection changes. Wow. The domino roach. I can see why with that spotted pattern like a domino. These guys are pretty famous. The Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And you guess it. They live in Madagascar. Wow. There's a few right over there. And a whole bunch of them down here on the bottom of the floor. I also like how right here they have a window where you can look into the area where the uh, keepers can actually prep the meals for the insects, take care of them, maintain them. Look, there's even some plants back there that they're actually uh, taking care of, probably to put inside these terrariums. I was showing people what it takes to run a zoo every day and give people a behind the scenes look. And got some mounted insects and then some that you can actually see on a giant microscope. Got a rotational table and it shows up right there on the screen for you. The white-eyed assassin bug of the forest of Africa. There is probably literally a hundred of them right there. Oh look! This guy's eating a, a cricket. Let's see if we can see it. this way. So I did just ask a volunteer here, and the red coloration, that bug just molted. Jade headed buffalo beetle of southern Africa. This one's, oh, that one's much larger right there. But this one's munching on, looks like a nice ripened piece of banana. 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 Now, wow. 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 It's like you're a bee inside of a hive now. And fun fact for you, bees are my favorite insects. They get a bad rap because they do sting you. But honestly, in my opinion, bees are such an important aspect of our world. The pollination that they provide for us. Without them, I mean, scientists have studied. Without them, we would pretty much be doomed. These are actual beehives. I don't know if you can see right there. Wow. They're building, and from what I understand, they open to the outside of the insect house so that they actually fly around to all the plants and trees and get the pollen that they need to survive and create these honeycombs, reproduce, have the queen lay some eggs. And of course, essentially make their honey. Giant silk moths, but you can see them. They're in their cocoons. Some of them are, but actually some of them have already gone through and hatched out their cocoons, and they're out here fluttering, getting ready to be released. So I did find out that their total lifespan is about 12 months, but of it, 10 months is stuck as a cocoon, and only one month as a caterpillar or uh, beforehand, and then afterwards as the moth.
So we went through the main front entrance, which is near the true entrance of the base camp. But if you come up the stairs here, kind of towards the back end of the new zoo, you can see the spineless marvels at this entrance. But it did bring us up here to the rooftop level. So now we can see some of the other animals hanging out here at a little higher level. We are at the hottest part of the day, unfortunately, now. So a lot of the animals, uh, you know, during in the wild, they relax, rest up, save their energy during these warmer parts of the day, and usually hunt or look for food in the earlier part or later parts. So right now we have the tamandua, the South American anteater. He's sleeping in his box over there. So cute. Throughout my journey here, I've had such an amazing time, and I hope you've been enjoying the video so far, but I want to add a little bit of an additional piece here, and I ran into none, uh, none other than Wildlife Ambassador Marco Went of the San Diego Zoo. He is, I'm a big fan of his. He is a, ma a man full of knowledge of all these animals here. He's a great ambassador, not only for the zoo, but for wildlife in general. But I want to ask you a question real quick, Marco, yes, if I could. Now that it's finally open, what does having this place here for the children of San Diego, and not just San Diego, but of the world, what does it mean to really have it now open here and so beautiful and everything? What do you think it means? I think it's the perfect time, especially with all the, everything going on in the world, right? So Wildlife Explorers Base Camp, it's a little over three acres, showcasing four different ecosystems, and it's about the explorers of the world, to so bring the, the youth, the families, and be inspired about nature, because Indeed. as you and I know, they are the future conservationists, the stewards of our planet, so this area here is so special to to highlight experiences with nature, nature play, uh, interactive technology, mm -hmm. and it's all to inspire the youth of the world. And as you know, we're San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, right? So we're an international nonprofit organization, a leader in conservation, mm -hmm. and we're the two front doors here in San sunny San Diego, as you know, the mm -hmm. San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park. Indeed. But as you know, we have eight conservation hubs spanning six continents, over 200 collaborators. So kids coming here, having a beautiful time, uh, enjoying the wildlife, eat, uh, buying a drink, uh, buying a plushie as an example. That's true. You're directly contributing to conservation efforts worldwide from platypus in Australia to polar bears in the polar oceans, uh, even a southwestern hub. For instance, the Burring Island, right, you can see a right. desert dune. So just want to highlight, it's a wonderful opportunity, so special, only here in sunny San Diego, where you can have a great time, be inspired, gain that empathy for wildlife, and help out in conservation worldwide. That is indeed a great message from a great man. Oh, thank thank you. you for following along. Give this video a big like. But again, Marco, thank you for everything. It's I appreciate pleasure, it. Brad. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So this is really cool. Again, some more terrariums. Looks like there's a lot of reptiles. We have a Madagascar and tree boa over here. Oh, he's not hiding. Another living lab here. This actually has incubators for reptile eggs. So you can actually see them hatch here. Look at that. Here's some eggs that are actually on display. The African dwarf crocodile. There's some that looks like they just hatched. A painted terrapin. A spider tortoise. And a Bolin's python. Look at the size of that. But look at that. They looks like they have possibly some uh, dry food and refrigerators there for some of the food for these different creatures here. And possibly a nursery or some sort of even hospital will probably take some of the uh, reptiles and creatures off exhibit, uh, heal them a little bit, de-stress them, whatever the case may be. But I w I, I'm looking forward to coming back here and seeing natural employees behind the scenes working and prepping food for the day, taking care of animals. This is going to be so much fun. There's no real one way to walk this new area. There's ups and downs, hills, side to side, back ways, front ways. Sideways and slant ways and long ways and back ways and, and square ways? ways and front ways and any other ways that you can think of. But I'm having a great time here exploring. I'm, I'm a kid again. You can just tell in my voice. I'm having such a good time. So definitely recommend you have to take a trip to the San Diego Zoo and check out the new base camp. It looks like here kind of towards the back side is the actual ambassador stage where they're going to have some of the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp Ambassadors. Uh, Foo here is more closely related to genets, civets, fusa, mongoose. It's probably the only one of those that most of you guys may have heard of. But they are this whole group of animals that are uh, going to be found in the old world. So that's going to be in Africa and Asia. 
Um, he's very active whenever it rains, and that's because he's got that long coat. So you can see it's really shiny here in the sun. Now it's very coarse. If you guys have ever felt a German Shepherd, imagine that, but kind of like the coarseness of a hairbrush. Also back over here next to the ambassador stage is some additional restrooms. Really love the uh, the decor, I get the theming on and everything. I'm a feeling we're in the sand dunes area. Look at these interactive bluffs, mountain bluffs that they have here. Such the way they built them is so nice. Look at it. They definitely took some detail in here. They even put some actual rocks in here to give it a little bit more of a uh, a look and a way to make it look like true sediment. Got a little uh, stepping dune right there that takes you onto the rope bridge, onto the jungle gym area. And they also have some dryers here. If you end up getting your kids get too wet, rent a dryer, get them dried out real quickly. And there's an additional small little kiosk over here selling some more items, hats, shirts, and sunscreen and towels if you forget them. Because you know it's bound to happen. You come here unprepared. The kid wants to get wet. Well, got to buy him some bathing suits and some sunscreen, right? Oh. Looks like this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The stupendous. The amazing. The eighth wonder of the world. The backside of water. So then from the little riverbed that comes from the waterfall, it flows down here. But look, there's little leaf frog sprinkles going on. Misters. And then there is the circle fountains over there, which really get you wet. But look at all these kids having a good old time. Their parents are going to have a hard time pulling them away from this. The Gyanin squirrel monkey. Look at that, they're right over there. The tree of dreams, that is the little jungle gym area here. The big old tree in the middle. You can run around and explore. The floor is of that special soft rubber material. Okay, we made it all the way up to the top. You can potentially get a nice a view of the Kawadis if they're out and about. And here is a, a rope tunnel that you can climb up on, make your way up here to the trees. You get another view here of those squirrel monkeys that we saw earlier. A little suspension rope platform here. Whoa, okay. That was fun and scary at the same time. Ah, uh, yeah, it bounces, but it's not... No, nah, nothing too scary. This is pretty much very, very flat of a suspension bridge. It doesn't really move at all. I guess it's because those spiders built a really nice, strong bridge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's scary. That is something scary a little bit. Gotta definitely keep your balance here. Whew. 
Okay. That was scary. And then at the end of the playground in the water park area, there's another small store and a tunnel underneath the bridge that leads you back to the other side. so far I'm gonna meet up with SoCal Disney dad Traver himself he's bringing the family as well it is such a fun time here I am I could be here for hours upon hours and hours next time I am breathing I am bringing my bathing suit because I am gonna go through those water fountains that was so much fun I'm gonna do it you can't stop me so we're gonna meet up with him walk around and explore and then we'll check out some of the other areas got a little behind the scenes footage action going on of SoCal Disney Dad right there what do we find first thing? well look at that it's like that meme on Spider-Man he's recording me and I'm recording him it's kind of it's kind of funny how that works out that way I love these large little play little statues that they got there the giant beetles in front of the germ ball a little kangaroo rat whole lot of play areas for the kids but not only just play areas, but essentially being able to play in the nature of the animals that live in these areas, such as like little dens and tunnels. So you are almost acting as if you are that animal. And a couple climb walls here. This one with some of the, uh, the little grappling handles that they do for like actual rock climbing. And then a rope wall that you can try to do yourself, or at least if you need assistance, use the rope to pull yourself up. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. 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 There we go. Got it. I'm doing it. Ugh. Oh my. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Got it. Okay. Here's the Fennec Fox habitat. It's a little warm, so I don't expect them to be out and about, but maybe they're sleeping somewhere and we can see them. Inside their little den, taking a little siesta. Cute guys. Perfect. But if you come here during the cooler hours of the day, usually right before park closing, they're quite active out and about. So definitely come here towards the end of the day of Jake's cool critters. But right in front, we have a nice wetlands area. I see some fish. I know there's some turtles in here. I believe there's some red, red ear sliders, some box turtles. Which is which? Can you tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Well, a crocodile has a more narrower V-shaped snout, and an alligator is a little broader with a U. But the way I like to think about it is, a crocodile will see you in a while, but an alligator will see you later. Wow, just the whole coloration design of this place. So amazing. Just look at the lights on the ceiling. Zoo, you did an amazing job just bringing this place, modernizing it, making it cool. Aesthetics alone, this place gets an A+. The Chinese giant salamander, and he is right there. Amazing. And then we're going to catch him for a feeding. The keeper's going to try to lure him out to feed him a little bit. So we're going to wait here for a second and see if we can catch him. Still can't get the front part, but that is a large, large salamander. Going upwards of up to six feet. Amazing. insect house that we went through earlier we got some giant African millipedes here wow those are really big now here it's very impressive we have the leaf cutter ants you can see them all right there they have the little mound opening over there 
You can see them actually pull up some of the leaves. Amazing. Just seeing them climb up and down this tree. Look. Wow. You can actually see those leaf cutter ants that were out there. They have little areas that they're going into. Look at that. So cool. Everything's all connected here so you get to see, look. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Look at all this. And here are some actual casings of true ant colonies. What they do is that they have, take abandoned ones and they actually put uh, like a liquid metal inside of them and then they cools down and they make these cool casings out of them. So you can see the intricacies, the tunnel ways, the pathways, the rooms. Look at that. And look how long this one is too. It's at least probably a good five feet long. What is that? Is that freaky thing? This is probably what I missed most about the children's zoo and not be able to see it for all this time. The naked mole rats. I absolutely love these guys. You get to visibly see their tunnels and pathways. Obviously the lights are a little bit lower so that they can see or not see it apparently. And of course one room is dedicated as strictly as a bathroom. Always is a bathroom. If I had to guess, I would say it's one of the empty ones. My guess would be either this one right here or the one right above it. That would be my guess for the bathrooms. This treetop canopy, the way that everything's themed, it's very like, I almost feel like I'm in a theme park the way it's all done. Look at this, the trees, the lighting, golden orb weavers. Not only did it have the structures around it to look like a web, but then you actually have the spiders making their own webs inside these webs of metal. Oh, that is scary. Look at how close you can get to these things. And Antilles, pink toe tarantula. So appropriately named. Has a little pinky tippy toes on it. That is going to do it for today's journey here at the San Diego Zoo for the grand opening of the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. I had an absolutely amazing time. I hope you did as well too watching the video. We got to check out the new exhibits here, check out the animals, interact, get to check out the jungle gym, and have so much fun here on this new bright and shining jewel of the zoo and the city of San Diego that is definitely going to be cherished for years and generations to come. So first of all, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up for me. Second, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And third, hit that notification bell because there's going to be lots of journeys heading on our way and you don't want to miss them. Outside of that, thank you again, Jumbo, and I'll see you on the next journey. Bye-bye now.